In this video, the trials of the smoky Daihatsu charade continue. We have a box of stuff from World of Lubricant, uh, worldoflubricant.co.uk, uh, that should be able to help, we think. Um, I'm certainly going to give them a go. And uh, yeah, stage one is start the engine and um, see how smoky it is compared to when I ran it after the oil change, because that's all we've done so far. Just drop the oil, put new oil in of the res recommended viscosity. So the car is saying, hello, happy, as it always does. Cheerful little car, the Daihatsu Charade. And start her up. And we'll roll her outside, because I don't smoke my workshop out. See, it's another lovely day in paradise. Thank goodness I have new wiper blades. Uh, it's not ideal to rev the engine when you've still got the cold light showing, so we're not going to go rem, 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 maximum revs, but if I hold the revs up, do we get any smoke? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're definitely still a smoking gun as far as the uh, little Daihatsu is concerned. So I'm going to pull her back into the garage the other way around so I can work on her without getting wet. And uh, we'll see what the potions box contains. Uh, this should be interesting. All right then, let's see what's in the um, the box. This way up, that's a good start. Okay. I love a bit of unboxing in the morning. Okay, let's put the dangerous items down and find out what we've got in our box. Lots of packaging. Oh, we've got a Liqui Molly hat, because these are Liqui Molly products. I don't know if I'm meant to wear that throughout the video, but I'm sticking with my rain hat today. A uh, Liqui Molly pen. And, uh, oh, some important information, I think, is contained within there. And a key ring, Liqui Molly key ring. Uh, let's see what we got here. We've got the motor oil saver. Uh, that's designed for um, seals, so if my valve stem seals are um, a bit tired, that may well help. So we'll put that to one side. We've got Liquid Molly hand sanitizer. Oh, that's good. It's always good to have some hand sanitizer about. So full discretion mode, or. Um, yeah, I, I haven't paid for any of this. This has been sent very kindly by World of uh, Lubricants. And uh, injection cleaner. Might be worth running some through. 130,000 miles. Those injectors have seen some life. Oil additive. Saves wear. So that is the true um, liquid moly um, substance there. It contains molybdenum disulfide. Uh, a highly durable lubrication film on all metal surfaces. Surfaces, rather. Uh, ensures the engine runs quietly, reduces the consumption of oil and fuel. Well, we'll be testing that one for sure. And uh, I think this is the most important one. Engine flush. Uh, or I particularly like the German, which is motor splunge. Uh, I like the sound of motor splunge. Or is that Italian? Lava motore. Uh, lavado de carter de moteur in the French and limpiador de moteur uh, which I think might be um, the um, French uh, or Portuguese possibly not French Spanish is what I meant so that's one we need to try so I will read the instructions on that and finally at the bottom we have got the recommended oil which is 540 liquid molly and uh, I believe that's a fully synthetic um, engine oil so 540 just a little bit thicker um, so hopefully that will have benefits uh, right that's quite the parts haul I'm going to read some instructions so I actually know what I'm going on about and uh, then we'll yeah start using the stuff well the motor flush seems um, straightforward mm -hmm. enough you add it to the oil and run the engine on idle for 10 minutes so no revving uh, I'm sure I can manage that. Uh, I'm just going to check the oil level first of all, so we don't really want to over 
load the oil. Uh, we're just going to find a rag for the cleansing of oil from dipstick. Uh, this one will do. And we'll see where the level is. Hopefully a little below maximum. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? It is a little below maximum. Perfect. So we shall pour in the stuff and uh, leave us sitting ticking over for 10 minutes. Uh, which one was it? Let's make sure we poured the right one in. Oh yes, Motorspulung. I apologise for my terrible German. I never learned German at school. Uh, useful skills uh, not picked up. I did French and Spanish and I didn't even get a GCSE pass grade in Spanish because I was that good. Uh, this is going to need a funnel. There you go, it's the dinkiest little funnel you ever did see. Uh, where did I put me flush? There it is. Oh yeah, that's watery. You say what the ingredients are? No, just basically danger, danger, keep it out of your eyes. Refit the oil cap and let her run. Yes, yes, hello little car. There we go, it's 20 to 10 now. Uh, we shall leave her sitting there idling for 10 minutes. We're a few minutes in. This is the point I remember the, the oil filter hasn't arrived yet. Annoyingly, I've got spark plugs for this engine, but um, because of where I live, so much has to come um, mail order, and the oil filter's not here yet. So there's no point draining the oil because I haven't got um, a new filter and you need a new filter because what's happening is that fluid is pulling all the crap from around the engine and an awful lot of it is going to end up in the oil filter so you have to fit a brand new oil filter that's maximum stupidity on my part so um, I am going to give it the 10 minutes but then I'll have to shut it off and leave it and um, we'll come back drain the oil and uh, fit a new oil filter next week once i've actually got the filter which is a shame because i was planning on taking this on a bit of a road trip this weekend because you have to put some miles on it for everything to really take effect so oh well my stupid fault yet again of course the other thing i forgot is that the handbrake on the other side or, or the um, rear brake anyway is seizing so that's less than ideal so really no chance of road trip in this car it's been a futile morning i think i'm going to go home and do some packing instead because uh i can't achieve an awful lot more here uh waiting for parts for the fox at the moment and there's no room to work on anything else because i have too many cars well actually uh it's later in the day and uh when i was at home at lunchtime the fuel filter sorry the oil filter arrived and the air filter as well as it happens but um that's the important bit we now have the oil filter so now we can drain the oil and obviously I'd much rather drain the oil hot but I don't really want to run it too much longer with that really thin sort of flushing fluid in it. So I think I'm going to say that's good enough. After all this is hub nut and I don't want to start doing things properly people will be wondering what on earth is going on. So um, go and grab a 14mm spanner for the sump plug and the drain plug again. That oil that's been in for not very long will come out and we'll put the um, 540 in with the um, various additives and see what's going on. Oh, the oil filter's fun. Um, I don't know if you can see it down there. Uh, let's see if I can leave it out. You see that white bit down there? Yeah, that's the oil filter. So it's nice and clean. It has been replaced fairly recently. Uh, I've managed to get my hand in from underneath. Um, there, I, there is no actual access that I can see. Um, other than that, we've out taken the entire front bumper off, which I really can't be bothered with. So, um, uh, yeah, I can get my arm in. It's, uh, it has come undone by hand, which is an encouraging sign because people often over-tighten um, oil filters. So once it's finished draining, I'll get the oil filter out, swap that over, fresh oil in. All right, here we go then. I'm going to start with the oil additive. I'll pour some of that in. I'm not going to pour all of it in because this is up for up to five litres and I don't think it gets anywhere near five litres. on this engine so i'm going to say that'll do that looks like pouring graphite in so that's the oil additive which i have used before so we'll see if that works 
Then we've got the motor oil saver. Uh, again, sufficient for up to five liters of oil. We are chucking every potion we can at this in a desperate attempt not to have to um, take the engine apart. So if it is the valve stem seals, this should help them. Oh yeah, that's gloopy. Um, firm up again. So I'll pour some of that in. Oh, that, yeah, that's like um, SA90 that is. Blimey. So we'll give a good gloop of that. Again, I'm not gonna give it all of it, just um, much of it. And finally, we actually put the oil in. Oh, we've got the fuel injector cleaner as well, but I need to save that for a fuel fill, I think. So then we're on to the um, Liqui Moly 5W40 uh, Lake Tauf High Tech. Uh, high Tech Synthes technology. Interesting. So this is just a little bit thicker uh, than the oil that was originally in the engine. 530 is the specification. Uh, again, hopefully this will help slightly. See if I can pour this in without getting it everywhere. Tiny little fill hole on these, so I should be using a funnel really. But uh, we're straight in the hole. Other um, innuendos are available. Which is only fitting, seeing as we are um, um, applying products supplied by World of Lubricants. Miss Hudnut did have a bit of a giggle at that one. She has such a childish mind. I'm way above such um, innuendo naturally. Where are we? That's a mere litre poured in so far. And uh, I didn't pre-fill the filter because the filter's at 90 degrees on the block, so you can't really pre-fill the filter. So we'll just have to um, hope she builds oil pressure quickly. I mean, modern engines tend to. They tend to be very quick at building pressure, whereas older engines would take their time. Uh, I remember driving um, a 1947 MGYT um, this was the um, Tora version of the um, Y-Type saloon. That's a couple of litres. I might just have a check at that point. And uh, I remember starting the engine and the owner saying, do not rev it. And uh, he was right because it did have an oil pressure gauge and you actually sat there and watched it gently building up oil pressure. You know that? Yeah, oil pump technology has come a long way. Do you seem to be missing the bolt that holds the dipstick tube to the block? So that's not ideal. Where are we? We're about halfway, so really I want a slight overfill because um, the um, oil filter will need to uh, take into account uh, that's empty at the moment, so pour a bit more oil in. Right, that's on full now, so I think I'll give it a short run just to get the oil circulating and then we'll um, check the oil level again. Uh, I'd like to do this. So. Uh, there will be beeping because the key's in. I do find that slightly annoying. Uh, start the engine. Oil light, oh, flickered. That has gone out pretty quick. So we'll do that. We'll um, just wait a bit for the oil to resettle and we'll check our level again. Uh, but uh, it's not a bad little engine to work on. That oil filter location isn't ideal. And uh, something else with this car, I've got no timing belt history. The owner thinks it might have been done when he got the car, um, but I don't think it's all that likely because the garage he bought the car from, that it doesn't seem likely that they would do the belt change. So uh, I have a horrible feeling timing belt may well be due at which stage you do the water pump as well. The coolant looks very fresh or relatively fresh. It's the later orange OAT fluid, uh, which does last a bit longer than the old blue fluid. But even so, um, yeah, not sure um, I want to risk that for too long. Timing belts are a pain because on a cheap car, it's a fairly considerable expense, but it's a simple engine really. So I can't imagine it's that much bother to actually um, do a timing belt on, albeit it's all a bit tight down there. Bang on full. So I got it right. I managed to overfill it very slightly and uh, it, we're now bang on the level. So that's good times, I should say. So let's run us some more and let's get that oil, the additives all circulating. So Liquid Molly say in, in the case of the uh, 
the um, oil additive. Uh, which one was that? That was the oil saver additive. But it can take 250 to 300 miles to really have an effect. You're not going to soften rubber overnight immediately. So I'm not expecting great miracles. Um, but it'll be interesting to see whether, what our smoke situation is. I'm just going to let that warm through. We could look at some lights while we're waiting, couldn't we? I'm going to put some lights on. Let's go for all of those lights and the hazard lights as well. Because I've not actually seen the indicators on this car yet. Oh yes, there they are. Sorry, I missed this on the original purchase, didn't I? There, Lovely looking indicators, nice and bright, despite being right next to a headlight. So that's good. Let's go and see what the rear lights are looking like. Oh yeah, um, I'm liking them quite a lot. Nice big rear lights. I don't like modern cars with tiny little LEDs and you don't know where the light's going to come from. Um, but I'm quite liking that. I assume we've got a fog light on one side or the other. Is it just one reverse light maybe? Uh, let's find out where's the fog light switch do you reckon? It's on the stalk. There we go. We've got the rear fog light on. I think yes. Yeah so we've got a uh, fog light one side high intensity and a reverse light the other side very much like um, the Deu Matiz and don't worry I will do a proper comparison between this pair of tiny terrors at some point um, so I imagine most um, ja the Japanese market wouldn't have this high intensity fog light that is something we seem to do in Europe and the rest of the world goes meh not very bothered uh, so yeah turn all the lights off again now That's just condensation from cold engine, I think. Yeah, that's what makes me think it isn't condensation. If you see the cat cloud blowing away, that's probably still quite oily. You can see all sorts of water came out of the exhaust when I was running it earlier. That looks very horrible because I imagine all this burning oil is doing absolutely nothing for the catalytic converter. So no temperature gauge is a mild annoyance on this car. But I'll tell you one thing I do like, um, if I put the lights on, look, it's got a little thing to tell you where the fuel door is. So the fuel door is on the passenger side of this vehicle. That's quite a nice little feature. Uh, shame you don't see that more on cars. The amount of times I've had to get out of a car and try and find a fuel filler, because, you know, I drive a lot of different cars all the time. So that's quite a good thing, I think. Less joyous is the um, position of the um, window switches here. I don't like that so much. You hear the idle's just gone down because it's now up to temperature, it reckons. Um, but I presume that just means that the coolant is um, somewhere near where it needs to be. So let's just raise those revs again. I mean, I'm no expert, but that still looks very smoky to me. And it smells disgusting. Um, I know some people are saying this smoke looks white, but I think that's just a trick of the camera. Uh, there's definitely a blue tinge to it, and uh, it hasn't magically gone away for putting a slightly different oil in. But um, I think really, um, well, I could do with taking it for a drive, but I've still got this sticky brake. But I might just go for a quick run around the block and see where we are. Fun fact, the Daihatsu Sherrard stroke mirror stroke Quare has um, no anti-roll bars. So a lot of people complain they roll a lot, but believe me, when you own a Citroen 2CV, they don't roll at all. Place bets now. Well, that looks better. That looks a lot better. Now, the key test is going to be when I do another cold 
start um, because that's when it seems to be at its worst. But uh, just check how hot that brake is. Yeah, it's warm. It's not getting horribly hot. If I couldn't touch the drum, I'd be a bit more worried. But yeah, I think I'm happy with that. See it blowing some crud out, but I suspect that's just because we've got so much oil in the exhaust system now. Oh, okay. Okay, we, we haven't got miracle cure stations yet, but hopefully it's better. Uh, our next footage will be a cold start. Right, we're a few days on um, with the Daihatsu Shirad. It's been sitting here over the weekend. Uh, so to recall, we put um, an additive in it, a flush rather, flush the oil, fresh oil, 5W40. And uh, I was gonna fit new spark plugs. I managed to leave those at home. So that was very clever. Won't be doing that today. What I do need to do before I can really do any more testing of this car, because I think I've got to drive it to see if I can get any actual improvement, uh, I've got to sort out the brakes. We've got this wheel at the back is binding. So today's activities are going to be finding out why. Uh, that's where I get to lie down on the job. Yeah, that's locked. Oh, there we go. I've wiggled the handbrake cable and suddenly the brake's free, so I think we've got our issue there. It is the handbrake cable by the look of it. So that's now lovely and free. Handbrake on and off again, just cycle it. On, off. Locked, so I think we need to get ourselves some handbrake cables, okay. So here we are in the engine bay, um, you can see old oil, sorry, old air filter and new air filter, which I've got my greasy mitts on because I'm really, really intelligent. If I zoom you in a bit down here, uh, the coil packs, sorry, not the coil packs, are they coil packs? I think they are little coil packs, aren't they? Um, are in here on top of the spark plugs um, held by this bar down here, which I just need to reinstate. And so you can get at the spark plug. So this is all inside the air cleaner assembly. So if that's not multitasking, I don't know what is. We will, of course, fully tighten the um, wheel nuts before we go any further. We're at that stage. She's on her wooden handbrake. We should start the engine. And we'll see whether we get any smoke today. Now I need to talk about smoke generally because there's been a lot of comments about the smoke this car has been generating. We've got something coming out of the tailpipe now. With a cold engine you get a lot of condensation and I think that's making the smoke appear more white than it otherwise would do. But you'll have to take it from me but it really does stink of oil and it is blue clouds. Uh, the main difference is the white clouds disperse quite quickly. The blue clouds don't. They hang around. So um, let's give it some gentle revs as if we were driving away. Yeah, it still looks a little smoky to me, so I'm going to actually set you up over here. I'm just going to drive it up the yard and we'll see what she does. Uh, first of all, I must remove my handbrake. Thankfully, it's a flat bit where she is at the moment. So this is what happens when I actually pull away in my little charade. Yes, I can see the smoke from here. But um, that's not as bad as it was, believe it or not. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's definitely um, an improving situation. Right, well, I've just filled up with fuel. I've put the um, injector cleaner I had. Uh, supplied by Liquid Molly in. We'll see if that makes a difference. It's not going to make a difference to the smoke, but it might make her run a bit better, maybe. 
but yeah importantly there doesn't seem to be that much of a blue haze following me down the road so um, I'm hopeful we may have not entirely eliminated there is still a, a bit of blue at times but uh, it's nowhere near what it was right just been for a good raz filled up the petrol and uh, not going to neutral and uh, it does seem we've got some genuine improvement going on here, I think. Uh, let's just try again. Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't say the problem has gone away, um, but to be honest, nor did I really expect um, just magic potions to make the problem go, go away entirely. It, it may yet do, we'll, we'll give it some time. Um, but it's certainly a lot better than it was. And I don't generally drive around doing that. I don't sit at traffic lights going. Um, so if we can avoid doing that, I think we'll be all right, to be honest. But what was a problem before? It was when I was holding the revs up, you were just getting acrid clouds of smoke out the back and that seems to have gone away and I'm hopeful that means that when I set off to drive in the morning uh, we won't have um, a trail of James Bond-esque smokescreen behind us going down the road. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes really but yeah I, I'm really pleased for, for basically doing nothing but pouring stuff into the oil we do seem to have got a benefit. So I'm going to keep going I will keep reporting on how this goes but yeah a big thank you to World of Lubricants um, for supplying those liquid molly products. It appears they definitely have made an improvement um, even if they haven't entirely eradicated the issue. But magic potions, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of magic potions to be honest, I rarely believe them but uh, I can't deny that things have changed there so um, yeah hopefully this is of some benefit to you. So thank you very much for watching uh, quick reminder you can head to the Hubnut store at hubnut.org if you so wish but otherwise yeah I'm just going to enjoy my little car. Farewell. Pachoo!